the Hyperspace. Podcasting in the 25th Century presents... Cloning it in. Welcome in, podcast pioneers, to Cloning It In, our discussion and review of Star Wars The Bad Batch. My name is Jared. Hey, my name is Matt. I'm Brian. Got the gang's and here. The gang it, is here. The gang's here. Uh, well, there's a few people who aren't here. You know, on our Star Wars shows, Lindsay is usually a, uh, a co-host, however... Sure. Uh, she has no frame of reference for this show because she doesn't watch The Bad Batch right. yet. Uh, and, of course, Mike's uh, strike continues <laughs> on Star Wars. So we'll see someday. Maybe he'll come back to us. But, you know, guys, I was in preparation for this show listening to our last Bad Batch podcast that we did, cloning it in. Mm-hmm. And you want to take a guess on when that was? Ooh, two years ago? Very close. It was August of 2021. Wow. That's when we did the season one wrap-up show for wow. The Bad Batch. It's and it was kind long. of it's kind of interesting listening to that episode because as we recorded it, you know, all that time ago, um, we were uh, we were hitting on things, I think, in our predictions that we may have seen come to pass. So uh, in that way, we were prophets uh, in some ways. But, you know, I am going to start out by saying that if you haven't watched The Bad Batch thus far and you don't want to be spoiled, the spoiler Walkman is in hand. And I mean, it, uh, It's in hand, but is it going to work? It, it always works. It pop- it doesn't always work it always works in fact it never has worked to be fair on the first try well we'll see about that i think i have it queued up to the the proper song and here we go and now oh yes i can feel my creation Oh, crap. Oh, like humping. we are excited, aren't we? Oh, you know what this is? It's when uh, Chewbacca's dad is watching that VR, <laughs> you know, Wookiee porno. <laughs> oh, God, that's, yeah, that was so weird. Off. Oh, what is going on there? So I'll turn bad. this off. Okay, let me. And. Okay. Whoops. Crap. Uh, that's prop comedy right there. We're spoiling uh, everything, guys. Come on. Everything. And listen, to be and fair, if you're not watching The Bad Batch, you should be. Because this show is fantastic. It and, is. Uh, and you can't be, you can't be left if behind. It. If you're a Star Wars Shamed. fan, you, there are certain things at this point that you should be clued in on. You should watch The Clone Wars. You should watch Rebels. And you should be up on The Bad Batch. Because this is good Star Wars, guys. Uh, I would agree with that. I think... The Bad Batch yeah. is possibly the most schizophrenic show I've ever watched. <laughs> well, no, I, I'd say this <laughs> season has been. It, yes. Yeah. But that having been said, if we do think back to the days of the Clone Wars, mm-hmm. we went weeks where we were in the midst of these adventures where we were like, what the heck am I watching? Oh, uh, some of those were just please stop. And I mean, the next R2 thing. and 3PO looking for a cake for Padme's party. Uh, <laughs> let's not even forget the infamous uh, frog uh, general, Maber Gascom, which his adventures went on for like what seemed like six months, which uh, it was terrible. Now, yeah. I will say at the front, the the bad batch is not that inconsistent. Even the filler episodes are enjoyable right. to me somewhat. Well, I mean, and... I, I think you could call season two the side quest because that's what this whole season seems to be for the most part. Is is you kind of want them to go in a direction where it's taking Star Wars, much like how Andor set a weird bar in recent Star Wars because it really kind of pushed that white space envelope really hard and it really gave a star wars fan a lot of like meat you know to chew Mm -hmm. on and the bad batch teases you with these kinds of things and you want it to like really 
sink its claws in and really pull forward in that in that narrative. But then it goes on all these side quests, and you know, yes, you're just kind of like, well, okay, you know, I'll go with I'm, you. But I will, I will say that when they have sunk their teeth into the meat, it's been quite good. All right, we'll get um, to that. Yeah. Very tasty. Yeah. So, you know, the season kicked off with what what I thought were some was an interesting adventure where they were trying to seize Count Dooku's assets, you know, because obviously in the timeline we are, um, we are probably less than a year or maybe a year after Revenge of the Sith. Of course, the Clone Wars cleanup uh, would continue for some time. And so they go to Sereno to Count Dooku's palace, which we did see in the Clone Wars, um, and to to start seizing his assets. And the Bad Batch were sent um, to kind of skim off the top of that to bring back to their uh, their underworld master Sid, you know, whatever wasn't tied down, and whatever was worth some money. And I thought the I thought those adventures were kind of interesting. A good, yeah. a good start to the season. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You know, I, I thought it was it was pretty exciting. It was a pretty good episode. My only honest complaint, and it's really kind of minor, is that I didn't really get to see any of the inside of uh, Dooku's palace, which I really kind of wanted to see a little bit of. And um, But beyond that, I, it was it was a good start to the show. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, you know, guys, before I forget, I'm sorry, because I just watched the recent, the newest episode just maybe an hour ago to, to be current yes. with this. And I have to get it off my chest before we go any further. Is that uh, Omega's voice or accent, I should say, weirds me out to no end. I cannot get a grasp on her accent. And every time her character speaks, I, I, I'm trying to like, I'm like, I'm trying to put it together. Like, how is she saying this? What is her? What is this accent? It's weirding me out, guys. I'm sorry. It's New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, she has a New, New Zealand, Zealand accent, but it's really not. It's really kind of something even more like unique to the show i think but well you know obviously she being a, a clone of jango's ha has picked up his his affectation but uh it, it's very pronounced mm -hmm. like so for example if you had tamora morrison saying hunter ricka i i don't think it would sound quite like it does when omega says it which is ricka hunter <laughs> ricka uh tick echo uh um, it just takes me out of it every now and then yeah well i mean it's, but I, i've uh, moved on now i feel it's off my chest <laughs> the sharing has been cathartic so matt but no but it, no like but Omega's back to your accent. back to your point spoils of war was a, a good kickoff to this to the season it was kind of clever i liked um you know they're showing you interesting aspects to the the early empire here mm -hmm. and how they're operating and and how they're kind of like slowly but surely just stripping resources away and getting their foot their 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 foothold on different places and the way they're doing it so it's kind of cool to see and I, I really liked i mean it's kind of a basic concept that they're looting in a sense but mm -hmm. it was kind of cool to see that they're looting the empire's looting all this stuff with these giant cargo containers going up and it was just kind yeah. of like that makes sense i, I, I mean can, yeah they're gonna fund this big operation they have yeah exactly now. and exactly. of course there's 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 almost precedent for this that um you know, in the in the wake of like World War One, the Allies basically stripped Germany of everything that wasn't tied down and said, "Okay, you know, you're you got to give us all this stuff." And well, I mean, I, Germany too. Germany was taking paintings and any, anything. Oh yeah, after art. So exactly. Yeah. So you know, I think that the the Empire is probably punishing these separatist worlds, mm -hmm. um, formerly separatist worlds, um, by by doing this and. Of course, in the public side, Count Dooku was the leader of the Separatists. So, of course, they're going to go and start ransacking his crap uh, because, hey, he's the guy, you know, to them, to us would be, you know, like going after, you know, hey, Hitler's Eagle's Nest. Yeah, let's go see what's in there. Um, But, uh, yeah, the uh, the animation on this show is uh, beyond reproach, even the the less... Um, even the filler episodes uh, ha are, look fantastic. Um, and I was noticing today, 
as I was watching the the newest episode, which which I thought was actually pretty good, even though it didn't really progress the story that we were introduced to last week. Um, some of that animation was just really, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, you know, you had the Lion King scene when all the antelope come through the valley, but I mean, that stuff, and it sounded great on on a surround sound system, and uh, I thought it looked fantastic. You know, his wrecker is like trying to cover, you know, the uh, the element that they're after, and they're all just running over him. And um, even just the way the dust moves in those dust clouds, it's it's stuff that you know usually would only see in a feature film. Yeah, and uh, it's really awesome that Lucasfilm Animation is continuing to evolve this style that they did with the clone wars. Yeah. You think where the clone wars started with that, you know, feature film, the animation and that to where bad batch is now. Mm -hmm. And it is just miles and miles different. And his leaps and bounds. It's, it looks like a different, I mean, even though the character models look similar, it's, it's almost like it's just night and day. When they approach Coruscant, in i guess it's the eighth episode it looks like revenge of the Sith. amazing amazing it's absolutely incredible and if they weren't holding to your point jared with the with their uh the face models the character models if they weren't sticking to that look just as you know just because that's the look that the clone wars started with yeah i can't even imagine what this show would look like if they try just themselves just to remodel these things to be as as you know normal as possible because the background the starships to your point the coruscant the planets the, yeah. the small animations, like the dust, the water, everything looks so amazing in the show. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, really like impressive. the newest episode, as we record this, just aired today, when they're approaching the ship and the or the, the planet in the Marauder, mm-hmm. um, it, it looks like a scene from uh, one of the movies, the live action films. You know, there's there's really no difference between the landscape and this ship. You know, if that la- if that ship had landed and, you know, Diego Luna had stepped out of it as Cassie and Andor, it would have looked yep. like it belonged there. Yeah, it was, you know, the uh, I'd like to also while we're here on the Marauder, I, you know, today I was kind of appreciating the Marauder. I mean, now that it's been stolen from them, <laughs> uh, I think the Marauder is a great looking ship. I think it's just yep. really cool. It's. You know, we've we've got the it's sort of the proto imperial shuttle with the trifold, but it 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 kind of looks it, it looks dangerous, a little it tougher, looks, a little tougher than the lambda yeah. shuttle. Yeah, yes, no more you know, yeah. um, I noticed something in that episode. Uh, well, I need to go back and verify, but it looks like uh-oh. they actually closed the landing platform on their on the shuttle. Yes, when they left, and they like never do that, and then it gets stolen. The one time oh. they closed the door, <laughs> man. <laughs> hey, you know that's, that's a good point. And I mean, <laughs> Brian, you're the the resident collector here. There, oh, yes. there has been no toy of the Marauder released, has there? No, not yet. It'd be well, nice to see it. I know there's a there's a movement out there among collectors, you know, that wants more vintage collection ships uh-huh. and things, but. You know, they want well, to do you know either the Haslab deal or they want Hasbro to do something. Well, it's a no brainer. I mean, for yeah. this. I mean uh so anyway, um you know, we I think uh was the second episode the the, the pod racing episode? No, that was the the fourth episode, I think. What no uh, they have Yeah, because to... the third one was the wasn't that the solitary clone? Solitary clone was third. Yeah. You know, that was, in- I saw, I picked up on something interesting when I was watching that today. I went back through and watched them all in a row. Oh, wow. And there is mention of the, um, the, uh, the defense recruiting act in that episode. Mm-hmm. Some guys sitting at the table eating lunch to our breakfast or something, talking about it. And then mm-hmm. it comes up in well, episode seven. Yes. Yeah, they, they definitely are plot point there. Sprinkling the breadcrumbs. Yeah. And I, I think that's certainly one of the biggest uh things that this sh- this season has brought us is the whole uh, defense uh recruitment act 
and the phasing out of the clones mm-hmm. and uh the 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 to bring and the the age of the storms. <laughs> well, I mean, I it, I tell you, you know, masterfully played, even like at the end of last season with um with uh the clone cities uh being destroyed and yeah. you know you think that it's you don't really think I mean it's pretty impressive when it happened, but I wasn't putting any of it together, but now you start to see all these little puzzle pieces and all these little chess pieces being played, you know, to to do just that to get the clones out and to do a conscription, you know, forced mm-hmm. army in of the Empire and how they managed to pull this off is pretty cool. How they explain this in the show. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean a step one obviously was getting rid of the cloning facilities on Camino because they you, they don't want them cranking out any more clones. Um and the thing that 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 impressed me about the whole thing of course palpatine was is playing chess like nine steps ahead of everybody else oh yeah he's and, the supercomputer <laughs> but i you know i have to admit when i was i was watching the episode where he appears and i thought well you know um as the bad batch go and the whole sequence of them getting on that venator star destroyer and then r- like crashing it into the dry docks i thought i thought all that was just awesome like they just move it off its moorings and smash it into the ground and i was like and then and then to get in the skate pods and just eject themselves that that all was fantastic and but then i thought you know as this evidence is presented to the senate i i was like well there's there's a catch there's something here that's not gonna be right but then they play it and it is what it is. It's, it's star destroyers destroying Camino. And I was like, well, holy crap. What, oh, what there was a about? catch. <laughs> it's always been a horrible event. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, his course, fault. <laughs> yeah. Palpatine comes and everybody is like in the Senate is like outraged and shocked. And then old Palpatine pops up and he's like, Admiral Rampart, you are a criminal, or whatever. He goes, arrest him. And, and so... I was just following orders. Dude. Oh. So, Rampart, I mean, so, do we think Rampart is... Is he going to be... Um, is he dead, or is he going to be... Is he going to become an ally to the fledgling rebellion? I kind of get the impression that we're not done seeing him yet. Yeah, we're not done with him. I think that uh, the emperor, you know, is kind of like you've played your part now. Now go away. Yeah, and and I'm obviously gonna, I'm gonna let you go. You just <laughs> go away. I think that's how that's going to play out. But well, it, it's funny. Like every time Palpatine does this, we thought we think back to remember when he's done with Dooku. Yeah. He's like. <laughs> Kill him now. Get him. <laughs> it's just like, okay. And Dooku's like, what? Uh, Rampart was the same way. He's like, wait, wait, what? No. <laughs> and so I, I just have to. And then Palpatine, of course, turning this to his advantage. The clones did not act alone. Or the Rampart did not act alone. And starts and gets what he wants anyway. Despite all this crap happening um but you know in the build-up to all this though they're doing a good job showing you the the new kind of apathy of the senate you know how mm-hmm. you know you have the, the the select senators now being like little sycophantic to the empire and to the emperor and they're just kind of like the yes men are in place already and you know the the senate is kind of a quiet place now you know mm-hmm. take it to like when when palpatine you know first announced the empire how yeah. how how much energy was still in the Senate. Now, when you're seeing it, it's just like, it's becoming a ghost town. It's already after just about a year into this, it's already quieting down yeah. and factions aren't speaking up and they're just kind of staying back. And, so, and you know, that carries all the way into Andor. Exactly. There's like 12 people in the whole right. building. It's like a bandit. Exactly. exactly. And you're just preaching to, you know, empty seats. Now I, I have to wonder this because I mean, and this is speculation. I'm asking you to speculate. 
so for the most part, people believe Palpatine to be the chancellor who was almost murdered by the Jedi, who who is left scarred and deformed. I, I think the only person who knows what is going on with him in his inner circle is probably his blue skinned friend, Masa Mita. Yeah. Like, true. because um, I'm sure that Palpatine wanted this to happen. I mean, he wanted to, to move through this, this particular act, but do you think that the, the evidence of the star destroyers destroying Camino was that a monkey wrench that he just used to his advantage? Because I think he probably would have gotten what he wanted if that had not happened, if they had not presented that evidence to the Senate. Does, do, do you see was, what I'm saying? I think like, it was going to work out either way for him. Oh, well, of course. You know, that's just kind of the way it goes for Palpatine, it seems like. He just knows how to manipulate every situation perfectly yes. to oh. you know, whatever means he wants you know, to accomplish. And, you know, I mean, we could go down all kinds of rabbit holes in this, but like, we don't know what we don't know. For example, in the beginning of, uh, was it episode seven or eight where the clones are in the clone bar, which by the way, it's pretty cool that in Coruscant, there's like clone hangouts and all that stuff and clone yeah. bars, which I, I did some research. Yeah. That, that clone bar shows up in season six of the clone wars. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's it's the same place from earlier. But it reminds remember. me of the one in uh like a lighter version of the one in uh episode two. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. Um but like the clone that is uh the you know, the two guys are talking and one's on the conspiracy train. Mm -hmm. And uh he might have been a, a plant himself just to get things, you know, talking and moving, you know, yes. just to draw out senators or or people who are, you know, trying to, you know, uh navigate you know against the current on this one so it's like there's so many different tentacles that palpatine i'm sure extended out to make this happen so mm -hmm. he was going to get it no matter what and i i think the minute camino was was wrecked it was a lock so yes what about that assassin okay i thought that was crosshair i did too i was like at first. i was like i did too i did too it's not even uh i was like oh this weirdo in a mask it's it's crosshair but then it turned out to be like a, a, just a clone yeah yeah Which, by the way crosshair is kind of dipped out of this show for a bit i'm sure we're going to see him on the back end but yeah you know it's kind of been um there was such a such a such a tension there in in season one and uh it just kind of like evaporated so I, i'm kind of looking forward to him somehow getting back in the show because i think that at this point he, he, we need a little injection of that kind of tension in the show you know something that happened in that uh, I guess it was episode eight or maybe at the end of, maybe it was at the end of seven when uh, the assassin kills himself with oh, the with big the... electric charge <laughs> tooth or something in his mouth. Do you remember and... where we'd seen that before? Where had we seen that before? In the Mandalorian. Oh yeah, that's right. The, the, he was the captain of that star destroyer. Yeah, that that's right. Bo-Katan and the Mando commandeered. Yep. And he oh, did the that's same thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I forgot about that. Fried his brain. But seeing that in an animated series that would purportedly be for kids, that was pretty, pretty hardcore yeah. shot to throw in there. It's true. It is, and it's uh, it's it's another aspect of the like what I call the schizophrenic nature of the show, <laughs> yeah. where we're having um. We're having a uh, Tomb Raider with Wanda Sykes one week, <laughs> and uh, the next week we're getting like you know, deep, deep, super deep, uh, deep lore cuts, oh, and you know, man. people committing suicide on screen. <laughs> so, you know, we got to go uh, back to that, that Wanda Sykes episode real quick, okay? Uh, <laughs> kind of, you know, interesting in the sense that you got to see more places of the galaxy, which is always fun to do. But yeah. I, I could not stand her character in this. Wanda Sykes is funny. I think she's actually pretty funny. But her character in this, she annoyed me so much. 
you know, she's supposed to be like this hardened space pirate that can walk into any bar and be respected. And all I'm thinking, she's just a joke, you know, and it's like, there's nothing tough about her. There's nothing, you know, respectable about her, but she's like, we're going to go liberate some, some treasure. I'm like, oh, every time she spoke <laughs> in that show, I'm like, this is just, well, this is terrible to me. It sounds like, it sounds like Wanda Sykes standing in a room reading lines. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it sounds like. And it doesn't help that they've the character they've animated looks like Wanda Sykes. Yeah. And, you know, at least with Rhea Perlman from of Cheers fame, at least she's a fat Trandoshan. So yeah. it, and like uh, Hector Elizondo is that farmer guy or whatever in one of those early in that second episode or something or first oh, really? episode. Hector yeah. Elizondo? Oh wow. Yeah. Well yeah, he was the guy that took him in. You know, he was there his oh, question yeah. y'all him imperial and they're like are you imperial and okay yeah i got you he took him in and kind of patched up uh tech i think or okay well uh another thing that happened recently is that is that echo went off with rex which i think was good because it's something that we actually talk about in our last cloning it in podcast in that tech and echo were almost interchangeable in their purpose Mm -hmm. uh they they were both always working on some technical problem working on a computer working on the ship um and neither one of them seemed to have any real personality because they were both always just doing the same thing together and you know i think echo actually he stood out because echo is not He's not a genetically altered clone, like the. I mean, he's been obviously altered. He's not a mutation. He's he's not augment- a mutation. He's an augmentation. Yeah, but he's still he's still of the same, uh, I guess, genetic uh, imprint as like Rex is. Mm. And you know, he's known Rex for a long time. And I thought it was interesting choice that they chose to have Echo go off with Rex at the end of episode eight. Yeah. Um, and I actually think in this most recent episode is the most personality we've seen out of tech so far. Well, I think this recent episode yeah. in particular gave the whole dynamic of the group a different kind of, of perspective because this group has always been a very well-oiled, well-trained unit with a little bit of comedy, but everyone has their roles and everyone doesn't kind of go outside their paradigm of where they exist. But like in this episode, they're bickering and they're like, they're kind of like at each other's throats and they're kind of like Mm -hmm. upset with each other. And you're seeing a different dynamic where part of the group has been kind of disassembled and that, you know, with, with, uh, you know, with echo gone and with, um, uh, crosshair Crosshair gone, the the group is now it's dwindling down. And, you know, I see how Omega is obviously looking at this as the last of the last piece of family she has, and she's losing pieces of it. So we see that dynamic and I like seeing them kind of like, questioning what's going on so yeah. and you know echo is uh, i mean you know tech is of course you know very like i process it i move on but mm-hmm. he's learning that things are changing well, which i like that the dynamics changing which by the way yes. before we move on off off how echo left i i think it's kind of a cool plot point how we saw the clone rights thing happen you know it's close yes. to being phased out of the empire you know they were an important piece of getting the empire to where it was and you know in the empire's view, or at least the citizens, this was an integral part of keeping them free and protecting mm-hmm. them from the separatists. So what happens to these clones as they're just discarded? So I, I thought it was kind of an interesting plot point yes. to see what is the future it, of these guys. You it's, know what I found interesting about that was, you know, they were talking about pensions and all this stuff. Well, these clones are, you know, they, they age double, right? Mm-hmm. So, I don't see what the big deal is about giving them a pension because they're going to die really quick yeah. after they get Which, by the way, with Rex, Rex obviously doesn't. There's a few clones that age out normally. No, no. Rex is part of the. No, I know that. But we okay. see Rex later in like Return of the Jedi, which is still years down the road, 15 years. Right. Well, yeah. Well, 20. well, Return of the Jedi is probably about 23, 24 years from. From, from where right we now. are, so it's like, but he's well age appropriate, I think. In that, in that, so I well, think we're going to have to identify some of these clones are probably not going to age out like the other ones are. So well, Rex is 
by the time of the original trilogy, I would say he's genetically some, somewhere in his 70s. Yeah. Whereas he is really only like 30 years old. Right. That makes uh, sense. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. So, um, but what happens to all the clones? Because like there should be a, there should be millions of seventy year old clones walking around. Yes, in, in the and, you know, in the time of like a New Hope. But well, obviously we don't see that. I, I think you're speculating here a minute. I, I think, and I think it's something we might see in the Bad Batch, and I think it would be amazing. Is there a clone uprising? You've got these clones, mm -hmm. some of whom are still wearing the armor, who are just going to say. And as the stormtroopers start to come to prominence, um, is there going to be some kind of, I don't know, another clone war uh, where this, it's stormtroopers versus clones? You know, the, there's going to be a reason you don't see mm -hmm. uh, a clone on every corner. By the I, think time. That, I think it comes down to that, whether it's I a conflict could... or a built in genetic time bomb that they have, something's going to. And the clones. I hopefully yeah. before we're done. I mean, it yeah. might not be this season either. It might be a third season of Bad Batch. Mm -hmm. But I think this show will cover what happens to the clones. Okay, yeah. so if you had stormtroopers facing off against clones, who's going to win that? Clones. Right. Clones. Well, <laughs> then again, stormtroopers can't I mean, hit if you, the broad side of a barn. But I mean, if like if clones are, are a foot <laughs> army, and you give and you give like you know heavy artillery to <laughs> yeah, stormtroopers, that's true. But no, as far as battle hard training and. No, it's not a chance. Well, I think that's something that we're being we're being led to in this show. Yeah. We're being led to this to whatever reckoning awaits the clones because you're we there's a reason we don't see a clones, a bunch of clones at the time of the original trilogy. I mean, there's an in-universe reason for it. Uh it, it's and I think that that's something that's going to be explored, and I think that's that's this show living up to its maximum potential like it has a couple of times this season mm -hmm. yeah. where it's really giving you those stories that you want to hear about like how did the stormtroopers come about and why are the clones gone um and that's something the bad batch is well positioned to address and i mean we're in the back half of the show now so it's time to start and you know when i saw that it was another filler episode I was kind of disappointed. I'm, I was hoping that the back half of this show was going to be straight narrative mm -hmm. and push it. But, you know, mm -hmm. I'll still take but, what I get. You know, I tell you what, though, in watching this show today, I I didn't I, I think it's probably one of my favorites of the fillers, because as you did say, there was some good character stuff in it. And Brian knows this and Matt, you will discover it. Omega is acting like a teenage girl. Yes. She's like, leave me alone. I don't want to talk to you. I'm going to go off by myself. <laughs> and it's these clones who are like just sitting there like, uh, well, and, and, and tech is probably the least equipped to deal with it because he's almost um, his, like he says, his brain works differently. Like I don't he's emotionless. Yes. And, and, and I know this firsthand girl, uh, you know, my daughter, you know, she's, she's very attached to things like, so Omega seeing the Marauder stolen, that impacts her deeply. And and for tech, it's just another piece of equipment that they'll get replaced. And she's wondering why he's not upset that Echo's not there. And tech's just like, hey, Echo's still out there and we can, you know, we'll, we'll see him again. I don't know what your problem is, but for someone that age, it, it's, it impacts her deeply because for her, Echo's not right next to her anymore, and mm -hmm. she can't talk to him. And uh, so it, it's just, uh, it was well, an interesting you know, dynamic. Speaking of Omega and her terrible accent, um, <laughs> no, it's, uh, you know, it's something that we brought up last year, or not last year, last uh, last time we talked about the show. You know, what's going to happen to Omega? What's her end? Like, where does this, does her character live on in the galaxy i mean does this person exist boba fett's sister is she out there or does she go down in flames with the the bad batch at some point i mean like what happens to omega well i am phasma no <laughs> <laughs> well here's the thing um i erroneously speculated that she would show up in book of boba fett 
And I think we all hoped that that but, that didn't yeah. happen. But she could have been one of the the Vespa riders. You never know. <laughs> the background. Riders. So yeah, <laughs> I think I think what they've done here is sort of set up a, a new Ahsoka mystery. Mm. Like, okay, well, you know, back in the day, we were all like, well, what's the deal with Ahsoka? Where's Ahsoka? Does she live? What? Why is she not in Revenge of the Sith? Um, and, you know, nowadays, of course, Ahsoka is getting her own live action show. So I think, obviously, someday we will find out what happens mm-hmm. to Omega, whether it's this season, whether it's next season, whether it's in a different show entirely. I, I we'll, we'll get our answer. I just, I, I don't know what that is. I think it could be very, it would be very bold for them to have her go out in some kind of blaze of glory with the rest of the team. Um, but I just don't know if they're going to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I wonder how go. long they'll keep the series going. Well, I mean, I hope for I don't, a while. Cause it's been really good. Well, I've, you know, I think they've got a lot of like, like Matt says, they have a lot of, like this white space to fill. Yeah. And I think this is a, this series right now, it's, it's our only look into this era. You know, we have, you know, we have Andor for the, 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 the lead up to the rebellion and a new hope. We have Mandalorian and those shows that tell us what happens after return of the Jedi. And bad batch is our, is our lone remaining window into the prequel era. And there's still, there's still a lot of stuff, of questions, and things that that need to be addressed. Yeah, if they want it, the runway's there. I mean, they have a lot of runway to to go down. So, yes, they have. I mean, literally, they have a, almost a couple of decades worth of you know lead to that. Time. It might be you know I know Andor's doing a time jump uh, in in how they're going to do season two, right? They're going to be doing yeah. episodes, a couple like three episodes in a time jump. I wouldn't mind if we did a time jump into season three however they end season two and get us a little further ahead Mm -hmm. you know and just kind of fill it out you know so yeah yeah because i think season two of bad batch it's pretty much just i think it's only been a few weeks since they've destroyed camino exactly so we're not that that far along yet but it'll be good to get a, a omega you know a little bit older you know grow her up a little bit yeah sure sure Kind of like they did ahsoka Yes, exactly. hundred percent. I don't know if that's what their plan would be, but I'm hoping that they will time jump season three a little bit. Yeah. Just, just get us out there a little more. Let the empire be a little more rooted in and let them be navigating more of a, of a tighter net than it is now. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, you know, you know, before we close it up, does anybody have any, um, any notes that they'd like to address any, any things, um, Brian, was, I know that, that you take notes. Well, me and Matt do not. I took no notes this time, but okay. I do have something that I think you and I may have talked about this briefly one night. But um, that? in that, I believe it was the second episode of the season where uh, Omega is reaching for some of that treasure from Dooku's palace, and it is just like the scene of where course. Indy is reaching for the cup in last crusade. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's I mean, uh that's a good I mean, it's note. A straight throwback. Which you saying that reminded me of something else. Uh we did visit we visited Kashyyyk. Yeah. Which I thought that was a really fun episode. A lot of transdotions on Kashyyyk. In yeah, this, that was a good one. In that episode. Yes. Yeah, yeah with kids. Um I, yeah, the spiders Gunji. grabbing them. That was pretty vicious at the oh, end. By the oh, way. with yeah. the spider like just pulled that <laughs> guy up. Yeah, with the yeah. music in the background. Oh, but um, gruesome. And I don't know, Matt, if you told me this, or maybe I thought it myself and just attributed it to you because yeah. it seems like something you would say is like, you know, it was it was good to see um, a, a Jedi, but how many? Order 66 mm. survivors are we going to keep running into? Right. right. That's you know, what I was saying. That was my first inclination after. And I liked the Wookiee episode a lot. I thought that was actually <clears throat> really a really one of the best episodes of the season, actually. Yeah. Um, But once again, we run into a Jedi, which is fine because we're only we're just a year, maybe at most a year and a half away from Order 66. Yeah. Right. Things are still very fresh. 
and it's okay. I don't mind seeing Jedi running around because we're going to, they're going to run into them, but they have to, we have to see some attrition here because by the time, you know, we get to a new hope, at least as Yoda feels in the force, there's none left, you know, now yeah, given pretty much, pretty much, at least from what he can, what he can gather from the force at that time. Sure. Because I think at that point, Ahsoka is already in a different time space. If I'm not mistaken. Well, no, right. she she's still around. I think she. Yeah. No, she. No, she, she, she. No, she's not she in that. Back, she came back at the end of of Jedi to appear. Remember, she came out of that temporal rift, and she says, it, uh, "I I'm not sure what happened. I, I don't know if she was way, gone either way, or either way. We we're led to believe that there's nothing. The Force isn't telling Yoda anything, so Yoda's sure. not feeling any of the of the Jedi left. So. We have to see some attrition here. So I'm okay seeing Jedi popping in and out. Just like we even mm-hmm. saw for the Mandalor- uh, Mandalorian 3 uh, season trailer, we see Jedi. I'm assuming that's probably a flashback from Grogu, yeah. you know, from the Jedi Temple. But, you know, Jedi have to start disappearing, you know, and I want to yeah. see them. I don't want to see them always live and make it. You know, it's yeah. okay to see some Jedi, you know, go down. So Yeah, absolutely. Um and I, I, but I, I thought it was the way that Gunji's story was handled. You know, he was on the run. He did not have his lightsaber. He was, he was in hiding. Right. And he, and apparently had, had never been back to, to Kashyyyk, to his home, because mm-hmm. as Jedi, they are taken very young. So he had no, he, he had no experience on Kashyyyk. But, you know, that was a good episode. And I'm, you know, I'm glad we snuck it in there. Which is um, the one where they went to the the sister's garage in the uh, Coruscant? Oh, that was <laughs> that was one of that was one of the uh, that was one of the one of the pivotal episodes oh. where that's where he took uh, Senator Chuchi. Right. Um, that they met up there at the Martez sisters, uh, or as Matt calls her, Patty, because Patty. of the cow cow pie <laughs> on her head. And I was like, oh man, are we? Are we going to get a Martez sisters cameo here? <laughs> uh, but fortunately that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, um, yeah, that was part of the, uh, the kind of the secret network that they had been building up. And um, so, uh, you know, I, I truly hope that, you know, obviously uh, the most recent episode this week was a cliffhanger. So we're going to have to see how they get out of this situation that they're in. Well, also, I, I I don't think it was just a cliff. Like, I don't think it's just a side quest cliffhanger. I think there's something that's going to be uncovered, obviously, from this. I'm hoping that this mm-hmm. turns into be a narrative pusher in some yeah. form or another. Yeah. And uh, and by the way, the the thief, the ship uh, looked a lot like Hondu a little bit, right? It yeah. wasn't, yeah. but I mean, the same kind of species almost with the helmet well, on. I don't know. It could be. I mean, I didn't really get a sense of much of anything, but but uh, uh I got to mention this. Because I, I I thought about it a couple of times before we sign off, the okay. So when Omega is on Coruscant, she's following Chuchi around, right? And I was thinking last season, this is a person Omega who was being hunted by Cad Bane, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and she is walking and talking to Rampart in the Senate. And following this senator around while the bad batch is off doing their thing. And it's like, holy crap, do you think maybe she should have stayed on the ship or something? <laughs> I mean, she's she's running around in Senate hallways. Um, apparently a wanted person who is not unknown to people. It's true. But 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 little Omega is just all over the place. <laughs> so and it's I was so like, overt, hmm. it's covert. Maybe so. Yeah. Maybe that's it. It's like, hey, just put it in their face and be like, oh, can't you know, be, can't be. The, the ramp. And interesting that the Kaminoan that they brought into question. Um, oh yeah, she didn't seem to recognize Omega. But then again, this Kaminoan was not really part of that. No, I think I think I think she's always stationed on on Coruscant, and she wasn't a part of that. Yeah, she was a politician. But you know, but, it's interesting because I'd like to, to. I mean, we could talk about all the stuff so long it's i liked how she was just kind of like look my people are gone 
just <laughs> I'm I'm in a good spot here. Don't rock the boat, kind of. Yeah, thing. it doesn't have anything to do with. Like, me. Don't don't yeah. drag me. I mean, I have a good life. Obviously, my people <laughs> don't anymore, but I'm okay. So don't rock this boat. It was interesting. Yeah. She wasn't like. Well, who cares like, about them? Just, well, it's all because about me. the the Kaminoans also now uh, apparently like an endangered species uh, in the galaxy because. They didn't just destroy Topoka City and the cloning facilities. They apparently went around the the entire planet and destroyed every um, every city around the globe. So, yeah, the Kaminoans. Another reason maybe you don't see Kaminoans hanging out in the Moss Eisley Cantina. Yeah. <laughs> but then again, how weird is that, right? Like nobody knew anything about Camino. Then all of a sudden, you have like and, politicians and, appear, and they're from well, Camino, and and to to think. Well, they're like, hey, uh, yeah, it's a, a storm, a big storm wiped out the entire planet. And and of course, in the show, they do say, that's ridiculous. Right. You know, these, yeah. these cities are made to withstand, you know, these storms. And all of a sudden, something happens and it just wipes every city on the planet out, which, you know, I'm glad they addressed. But it, it does seem like people are being just willfully ignorant yeah. And being like, oh, crap, Camino got destroyed. I don't know what happened. They had a big wave. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but it, of course, it was in service to the story because we, we saw the video recording of what actually happened. And um, that's, uh, yeah. That's... yeah but it's funny about how, you're right, Omega is, you know, she's on the wanted list and nobody cares. Nobody as cares. is As is the entire Bad Batch. They're still wanted. People. Yeah. Um, because I don't think Rampart, well, Rampart's not in the picture right now, but, um, <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know who Crossfire is. And I wouldn't be surprised if Crossfire, Crosshair, uh, Crosshair, I'm sorry, Crosshair works with Rampart and gets him out or does something because he's, yeah. he's kind of a, on his own lone wolf mission anyway well, here. But he had something of an awakening in his episode. Uh, when Commander Cody, who, of course, is a Revenge of the Sith alumni, mm -hmm. he goes AWOL. He's like, you know what? Forget this. I'm I'm done. And uh, he, him and Cody have a talk. And, you know, I think Crosshair, we could, he, he sh I think he's being set up, obviously, for some sort of redemption. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, uh, he's apparently, you know, he's, I think I saw some cracks start to form in, in his episode, you know, he was, you know, he's not really, he's not the true believer. I don't think that he once was. Not like the guy that shocked himself to death. No, no. And he called himself a true believer. Yeah. And, um, and Rex is like, what, what is, what does that mean? So, you know, maybe there are this subset of clones who are like super loyal to, to Palpatine and uh and of course you know we do have the the clones you know Rex and so forth that that know what Palpatine's up to they know he's evil yeah that they they've found this out for themselves so um and I think it's very interesting in this show in those episodes that we were talking about where you know people still want the clones around to protect them from the insurgencies that are popping up across the galaxy which is of course setting up the rebellion which after watching andor that has a whole new mm -hmm. you think about it in an entirely different way so I, I really think it's great this 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 storytelling that that they're doing in this era specifically well you know i said it before disney uh animated shows uh, the animated star wars have really for the most part really hit well and um yeah and I, I just think the Bad Batch is just one of those shows that I look forward to watching. And uh, every Wednesday when it drops, I, I try and see it right away. It's like it's just yeah. an, it's a good, exciting like time of Star Wars, piece of Star Wars that I, I want to be in and, and see more of. So, I mean, I like everything they give me, whether it's, you know, pushing the narrative forward or it's just filler. It's a great show. And if you're not watching the Bad Batch, I highly recommend jumping on it. You don't even have to watch the Clone Wars. It helps. But you can get right into season one of the Bad Batch. Catch up quick. And it's a good watch, and it's an exciting show. And it's the white space. If you're a Star Wars fan, it's that white space that you're just dying to see filled. And they do such a good job. So I'm looking forward to the back half of this show. We're going to come back and talk to you at the end of that. We're going to give you our full season recap. 
Yes. We'll give you our thoughts to see if they're going to give us a season three, what that season three is going to be like. So don't move anywhere, guys. Watch Disney Plus. Watch The Bad Batch. Come and join us. Come listen to our show, and we will probably spoil everything under the sun for you. <laughs> so, but uh, but again, Brian, always thank you for joining the show. Oh, well, thanks yes. for having me. You know, yeah. a, a true staple of our Star Wars podcasts. Yeah, and um, and we will uh, we'll be seeing you soon. You know you can't live without this content, so subscribe to the Hyperspace Podcasting in the 25th Century. Follow us on social media, leave us a review, and join us here next time as we take you into the 25th Century.